Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce to you the amazing Rumble Bowling. Uh, brutal experience. 
things that have happened. Um, we're a military, uh, very well equipped um, military had attacked uh, a building that had villagers and elders and children and women uh, where they, they, were, they thought this warlord was. In any case, there was one, it was the absolute worst day of my life. And so when Tom said we should make a movie about happiness, I wanted to explore that question Dan had. How is it possible that people who have suffered so much can still be resilient and curious and happy? And they have more joy for life than my friends back home. Very bizarre. I don't know anybody who suffered like the people most of these did. So I immediately got online and said, yes, we should definitely make this documentary. He said, look, I, I make comedies. I don't know how to make documentaries. You do. I'll help you pay for it. And as a documentary filmmaker, that's the main challenge. So I said, hey, it sounds wonderful. <laughs> hang out with happy people and learn about happiness for a year. It was six years till I finally finished, but it was worth it. Um, one of the things I discovered immediately when I got online is that uh, there are benefits to happiness. Now this may sound sort of obvious, but I was really excited to see that scientists were, not, that were now saying that happy people are more creative, they do better at work, they do better at school, they get better grades, they get more raises, they get better peer reviews. If they're doctors, they get fewer complaints from their patients and more praise. So happiness is really a win-win-win. Happy people are also even healthier than unhappy people. And to top it off, they live longer. So I thought, okay, if that's not a reason to explore happiness, I don't know what it is. And I immediately remember a time when I was a child and I read the Guinness Book of World Records. And it often said that the oldest person in the world, I was always curious about, who's the oldest now? A 115-year-old woman in Okinawa, Japan. There's always somebody in Japan, often, and often from a very specific place, an island in the south of Okinawa. So I sort of put two, two and two together, and I thought, if the scientists are saying that happy people live long, then maybe these people who live very long are happy. And this was at the beginning of this field of science, so there wasn't any data that I could find at the time. But my producing partner and one of my best friends is Japanese. And so we decided just to go to Okinawa and see. It's one of the bigger gambles we took on the trip. And Okinawa is a very beautiful place, um, very kind of rural, uh, not many cars. And we, we immediately went to a village called Ogimisan, which means the longevity village, because there are more 100 year old people living there than anywhere else in the world for Kakara. And we ended up at the community center. Um, one thing I learned immediately is if you want to feel very tall, but now it's a good place. What these women lacked in, in physical height, they made up for in spirit. We were hanging out with people who were mostly in the mid 90s, some in the mid 80s, and they had a boombox and a stereo blasting music. <laughs> and that was traditional Okinawan music, it was a rap music, but, but they were doing things that we do when we were teenagers. And they were learning, uh, one of them was teaching them a recipe. And every once in a while, one of these women would get up and just start dancing, just kind of spontaneously. And then another one would join her. And I thought this was. But this is kind of beautiful. I've seen people who are older than my grandma. My grandma could barely walk when she um, passed away in her mid-80s. And here were people dancing and singing. 